Amen? All right. It's really with great joy and honor that you've already found out that today, even though I've announced the launch date of my, my new book, I was telling you that this is the launch date of a new series, and it is. But I had a plan because I love you, and you are my family, to launch this book here before I took it anywhere on the road. <laughs> because you're part of it. We've walked together, many of us, for quite some time. And no matter how long you've been part of this church family, you're so valuable. There's a number of you that, are, that will either watch this on uh, Facebook Live or maybe watching now or, or watch the archive or you'll listen to the podcast that you're part of this ministry as well. You're working today, things beyond your control that, that you're not here. And maybe even some of you getting, getting access to it that um, you just need to get back on board. You're part of it. And this journey's been special in so many ways. And today I'm going to t touch on some things, but I'm not going to really, per se, preach this book. I'm going to let you read the book. Because I believe that God's given me some things to share with you within the content of this, this book that changed my life, things I've learned, things I've learned that have helped me make it, things that I've learned that have helped me prosper and succeed, things I've learned by mistakes, a lot of things that have occurred and taken place that, that I'm grateful that I was able to walk through the process. And again... You had so much to do with it just by being part of this house. Now, it goes back far beyond I even before I ever, excuse me, ever picked up a Bible and preached for the first time. It goes back to my beginning. My beginning that had me introduced to Jesus at a very young age, and you can read about that. Somewhat you've heard about that. But I share some things within the book that I probably never shared with you up until this point. And some things I don't really need to share from a platform, but I have another platform. And so the name of the book is It All Matters, Finding Value in All Life's Moments. I got the inspiration of it from this book. Now I'm hoping that mine's a, a bestseller, but this is the bestseller. And would somebody give it up for the B-I-B-L-E? That's the book for you and me. It's the bestseller of all time. It really is. The Bible. And I agree in the name of Jesus that it will be forever the all-time bestseller. I want you to go with me to the book of St. John. St. John's Gospel, chapter 6. I do have a, a gift for you that I just want to just sow into your life. I had some of these um, silicone or kind of like rubber wristbands made that say it all matters on it. I want everybody in the church that wants to wear one. If you don't want to wear one, that's okay, we'll give it to somebody else. Nobody condemns you. But if you're willing to wear it, I want to give you one of those at the end of the service today while you're leaving. I'm going to do something kind of different from what I uh, ever do. Uh, I'm going to do ministry, and then I'm going to go back to the table because I want to touch, your, touch you, I want to shake your hand, I want to speak to you. And, and if you want one of the books, you can access them at that time. But be sure and get them. We've got them in youth sizes, and we've got them in... Uh, adult sizes but uh, guys you have to get an adult size you just do you have to turn in your man card if you don't <laughs> I want to make sure that the kids that want one I'm, I'm messing with you I, got, I think we've got plenty uh, as a matter of fact we have a lot and, and I'm messing with you but anyhow be sure and get one it's, it, and when you look at it I want you to wear it through the entire series if you'll commit through four weeks I want you to wear it for the entire series you can shower in them can do kind of stuff. I don't know if, you, if you're into paint and stuff like that. You might want to take it off, you know, or something like that. But you can wear them all the time. And it will remind you of what we're into within this series. It will help you meditate on it just that much more. John chapter 6 today. Verse 1. I'm going to read. Oh. I'm going to read a few verses of scripture. More than a few. But I want you to listen to this great, great story. This happening in the ministry of Jesus. Verse 1. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the lake of Tiberias, which is also known as the Lake of Galilee. And a massive crowd of people followed him everywhere. They were attracted by his miracles and healings. 
They watched him perform. Jesus went up the slope of a hill and sat down with his disciples. Now it was approaching the time of the Jewish celebration of Passover. And there were many pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem in the crowd. As Jesus sat down, he looked out and he saw the massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill for they wanted to be near him. So he turned to Philip and said, Where will we buy enough food to feed all these people? Now Jesus already knew what he was about to do. But he said this to stretch Philip's faith. Philip answered, Well, I suppose if we were to give everyone only a snack, it would cost thousands of dollars to buy enough food. But just then, Andrew, Peter's brother, spoke up and said, Look, here's a young person with five barley loaves and two small fish. But how far would that go with this huge crowd? Have everyone sit down, Jesus said to his disciples. And so on the vast grassy slope, more than 5,000 hungry people sat down. Jesus then took the barley loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. He then gave it to the disciples to distribute to the people. Miraculously, the food was multiplied with everyone eating as much as they wanted. When everyone was satisfied, Jesus told his disciples, Now go back and gather up the pieces left over so that nothing will be wasted. The disciples filled up 12 baskets of fragments, a basket of leftovers for each disciple. All the people were astounded as they saw with their own eyes the incredible miracle of, that Jesus had performed. They began to say among themselves, He really is the one, the true prophet we've been expecting. And today as I move into part one of this series, It All Matters, I want to call this message, Gathering or Gather Up the Pieces. Gather Up the Pieces. I don't think at any other point in my life I would have been able to share this, hopefully with a level of impact, that I will be able to share with you through the writings of this book and through this series in a different kind of a way. When God called me to preach, He put a courage inside of me that's so much bigger than me and nobody knows it like I know it. A courage and a boldness on the inside of me that preaches in a way, not because I'm just trying to be straight, but preaches in a way that my best friend is Jesus and I want everybody else to have access to Him. Because there really, there's nothing cheap about what Jesus has done. Nothing, nothing cheap at all. And, and everything that He did is, is worthy of us giving great attention to, putting great value on it, and being open to it, and not treating it like, I like this part, I don't like this part. I'll accept this part, I won't accept that part. If we belong to Him... The only right we have is to want it all because it all matters. Smile at someone and say, it really does all matter. And so everything in my life that God has been part of, every stupid thing that I didn't allow God to be part of, that he delivered me from. I don't, I'm, this is not a message about God's sovereignty that things are going to happen just the way they happen and nobody can do anything about it because I don't really believe it that way. I believe that when you have opportunities, it's what you do with them. When you have moments, it's what you do with them. When you have those kind of situations, it's that you, you learn from them or you make adjustments or you make new steps or new strides and then that gives place to whether or not at the end of the day you will have been and moved into God's predetermined destiny for your life. But the only way to get there is not because God makes it happen, it's because you choose to give place for it to happen. Very important. That's empowering if you'll hear it, because nobody can stop you from doing that right thing but you. Not Satan, not people, not Mom and them, not Auntie and them, not M and them. None of them can stop you. So quit saying they can. 
At the, fi- at the end of the day, the final analysis, if you want to give place to God, God angels are greater than demons. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is greater than the, 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 the junk of the enemy. You can learn, and you can grow, and you can change. In 2007, I was invited to preach with a group of men um, on Trinity Broadcast Network. It was a very unique opportunity. It caught me by surprise. It happened on a pastor appreciation while Jensen Franklin was standing on this platform. And in the middle of it, he stopped and said, Hey, Chris, will you come preach with me on TBN? I looked at him and I thought, Did he just say what I think he said? (laughs) And then my response was, I preached about every other place. I preached in some of the, I preached preached in big cities. I preached in some places that GPSs couldn't find. The the Holy Spirit would have to stop and ask for directions almost. (laughs) Maybe not quite that bad. But but, but I said, well, sure. And, And anyhow, God made that happen. And on that given night there in Atlanta, Georgia, we were gathered in a room. Jensen Franklin, uh, Ed Young, pastor of a great church, I believe Fellowship Church, in in multiple campuses in Texas. Dr. Bob Rogers, pastor pastor of Evangel World Prayer Center. Mark Harris, who was a tremendous Christian artist that I went to school with years ago. We were uniquely reunited. I had no idea he would be there. And that service began to roll. I was expected to have an allocated time where I I would share and preach at a certain moment. But the Holy Spirit began to move and touch in a different kind of a way. And so the timelines kind of got thrown out. Now, I believed in that and practiced that my whole ministry. So I'm cool with that because at the end of the day, and I, don't, I know why I keep saying it at the end of the day, but I'm saying it a lot lately. And all through the day, it matters that we just let the Holy Spirit have its way in every situation that we're in. And so that night, time got real short, and when they brought me to the platform, I sat down, and the Holy Ghost was churning things on the inside of me. And, 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 and at times, there was so much going on in my heart and in my mind, I began to realize that he didn't bring me there to preach. He brought me there to give an altar call. He brought me there to help cast a net. Well, I really did kind of want to preach because I'd been prepping for it for quite some time. But I prepped for all this. And so uh, I began to give the invitation. While I was giving it, I said, I looked into the camera. I had no idea how many people were watching. I had no idea from wherever they were from. I know at that time, TBN had over, I think, over 200. They were over, in over 200 nations and countries around the world at that time. Maybe even more, but all over the place. I looked into the camera and I said these words, these, these simple yet powerful words. And it's amazing how that sometimes the most simple phrases are the ones that God uses to make the huge impact. And I said in the camera, you matter. And I began to address some different kinds of needs and people's situations. But that you matter phrase, I began to get emails from people from around the world. It seems that that night, the Lord said, you matter through me. That people heard the voice of the Lord through my voice. As people from Mexico, as people from the United Kingdom, as people from Africa, various places, I mean just a lot of them, and again and again and again and again, you told me that I mattered. Well, I'm sure they've been told that how many times in their life? Some of them maybe never, I understand that, but some of them have been told that at least maybe by their mom at some point in their life. But on this particular night, they heard those simple words, and God did something in their life that changed their life. That five-minute window made an impact that was huge. But that five-minute window didn't just have access to my life that night. It went all the way back to my rearing, to my upbringing, to my choice to be someone who studies the Word, 
to my choice to give place to the pull of the Holy Spirit to learn to be a worshiper and a praiser. It came back to that, that, that willingness and openness to be a disciple and not somebody that kind of just drags God around and pulls him out when it's convenient to let people know, oh, by the way, I'm a Christian. Come on, somebody, help me preach. <laughs> but, but to let him lead my life, all of those things culminated in a moment like that. But that was not my final moment. It was a moment that mattered for many people. And when we can understand that our lives matter not only for us, but they matter for our influence and the impact of our influence, we need to elevate our thinking that we must not only think about what is going to happen for me in this situation. And that's normal. That's not bad at all. But what is God going to be able to do through this? Who can God potentially help through this? Who can God minister to through this whose life can be impacted in the midst of this? I really do not know how many people came to the Lord that night. They told me that there was a huge amount of salvations that took place. Now remember, I gave the altar call. So that whole service was a, was a message. That whole service was an was a opportunity to set people up to receive the glorious gospel. And honestly, what God wants to do in you is a message. What He wants to do with you is, is more than what meets the eye at the moment. And this is why we must live for God all the time. We must constantly be living for God. There's a number of people who say that they're saved, but by the way they're living, they're not living for God. Living for God is something that we get to do, we need to do, and really if we're obedient, we must do that because it's in that living for Him process that gives place for moments that matter and we find value in moments that some people would never even notice. Things that God can show you and reveal to you. How many of you want God to show you some things and reveal some things to you about your life? Give him a hand clap of praise. Some of you will look back. I say this prophetically. Some of you will look back and you will say, My God, something went off in me that day. Something happened in me that day. A, a new spirit of faith went off in me that day. Something mattered that will matter down the road. And if you don't know how to pray, you're never going to be anointed. If you don't, if you don't study the Bible, all you will do is give people things that will not help them. You'll offer up and you'll belch up some pablum of religion or you'll talk about something that really ain't got a whole lot to do with anything. And you'll, you'll cause people to miss what they could have had. And even though you're gifted and called to do something, you don't apply the things that matter in the process of living for God. <laughs> God wants to use us great publicly. But if He's going to use me on Sunday, it matters how I lived on Monday. And I'm not meaning legalism. I mean walking with God. Some people are so worried. You worried about what I'm doing? I'm telling you, if you walk with God, if you're doing something wrong, you're going to straighten up because He's going to help you. The answer is not just trying to quit doing all the crazy things. The answer is getting closer to God, closer than you've ever been in your life. Not following Him from a distance and not acting like a lot of modern church culture, but getting closer to God than you've ever been before in your life. And I promise you, the death grip of bondage will leave your life and you'll live in a freedom that's unstoppable. Shout hallelujah, hallelujah. went away from where I was trying to get to. That's funny. You just had to be in here. That, that, little, that litany going on inside of my head. Jesus had, in the previous chapter, he had healed a man at the pool of Bethesda. He had given a lot of different types of instruction. He had challenged people and charged people, and the Bible says that after this, and that's the stuff that happened in the previous chapter, he went to the other side of the lake of Tiberias. Most translations say Sea of Tiberias. They're just like great lakes, big bodies of water. And they were attracted to Jesus, the Bible pointed out, because of the miracles and the healings which he performed. He is a miracle worker. 
And the greatest miracle that He'll ever do is when He changes a heart and He changes a life. But He's not limited to forgiving your sins. He can heal your body. Janice Faison sits in this room today having had leukemia, but she's in remission today by the healing power of Almighty God. I don't have time to get everything said. Ooh, and I want to get said today. If I go off on all the testimonies, I could give, I could give you testimony after testimony after testimony that our Jesus is a miracle worker. He is a miracle man. Hallelujah. And miracles flow from Him in abundance. Miracles and healings which He did. They were drawn to Him. And Jesus went up the slope of the hill, and he sat down with his disciples. And he had taught them. He had healed them. They were hanging on every word he was saying. And honestly, it was what he did that gave room for him to speak to them. I'm going to tell you something. If you're not doing something different than what is being seen in the world, people ain't going to listen to you about your faith. I think I will. Thank you for agging me on. If you're not doing something different, if you're not living a different way. And I want to say something. You should not be intimidated. I want to set you free if you are. That you can lay your hands on somebody by permission. Matter of fact, when you start talking about the things of God and you see somebody in a broken situation, you can say, you know what? I believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you'll allow me to, I can lay my hands on you right here. And I believe that He still works miracles. I believe He still heals. I believe He still delivers. He's not the El has been. He's the El shall die. And I believe He still does. But how many things don't happen? Because nobody's praying. And nobody's asking. Because it's politically incorrect. I didn't say put your hands. I don't want nobody putting their hands on my head without permission. You come at me about to put your hand on my head, and you don't tell me why. I mean, bless you with the love of the Lord. Grab your wrist and snatch it behind your back in the love of the Lord. But if I ask you to, then by all means. <laughs> Ooh, somebody say amen. Preaching and meddling right along. Jesus sat down and he looked and he saw the massive crowd. And he says something to the disciples. Where will we buy enough food to feed all these people? As if he didn't know already what he was going to do. But in his heart I think he knew. But they didn't know. And here's what he said. It's an interesting phrase. He said this to stretch Philip's faith. There are things being said this morning to stretch your faith. You don't need to be in an atmosphere that will not stretch your faith. <laughs> we don't need more preachers who will not stretch people's faith. We need to be faith-stretching churches because we've got much that needs the intervention of faith. And faith will ever be increasing if we'll keep hanging with Jesus. Walking with Jesus, he said that to Philip to stretch his faith. Philip answered, well, he's trying to get, you know, do the best you can. When Jesus asks you a question, you better come up with something. And he says, I suppose if we were to give everyone only a snack, it, you know, it would cost thousands of dollars to buy all that food. But about that time, Andrew, Peter's brother, spoke up and said, look, Here's a young person with five barley loaves and two fish. But how is that going to get anything done in this big crowd? Have you ever thought about that text? Only person in that whole group of thousands. One person's got a sack lunch. <laughs> we don't know about anybody else having one either. They left it at home. Didn't think about it. Got so caught up in Jesus that they decided that eating didn't matter? That is possible. But his mama packed a lunch for him. He's a young person, so I doubt he probably remembered to do that by himself. 
five loaves and two fish, but you got 5,000 men, not including women and children. How in the world are you going to feed that many people on five loaves and two fish? Jesus said, that's exactly what I need. Bring me a seed. We talk to God about need, and God talks to us about seed. Every harvest is preceded by a seed. If seeds are not sown, harvests are not grown. You like that, don't you, Roseanne? I know you're in here somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. She likes that rhyming stuff. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus took those fish and bread. One translation, not one translation, one of the gospel writers. I think it's in the King James. One of the gospel writers said Jesus took it. I want you to know that little becomes much when God is in it. Maybe you got just a little, but little becomes much when God is in it. Truth be known, the best thing we've ever given Him in comparison to His ability is little. Little is much when God is in it. But little only becomes a seed when we get it out of the bag or we get it out of the hiding place or we undig it where we've hidden it and we put it in the hands of Jesus. Jesus is about to incorporate his disciples, his church, and the work of what he's doing. Let somebody say, it all matters. Pay attention. It all, it all matters. But, but, but before Jesus does that, he said, I got to get it in my hands. Oh, hallelujah. I want to say to everyone under the sound of my voice today, before you put your life into the hands of any preacher or any church, make sure you put your life into the hands of Jesus. If you will put your life into the hands of Jesus, he will take the little of your life and he able to make much of your life if you really want increase if you really want Jesus to do something or you want something better said to happen that's great with your life put your life in the hands of Jesus first shout first Jesus took them as they were handed to him he didn't Take them against the will of the person. They were yielded to him. Same with you and me. He's not taking your life and making you do what you hellaciously don't want to do. But what he will do is when you say, here I am. And in comparison to what he wants to do, it's truth. Don't look like I have much to offer, Lord, but here I am. And after you say that one time, that's the last day everyone wants to hear you say something like that. Because from then on, he wants you to begin to think differently. Because when you leave the worlds and the devils and, and, and life without God's hands and you come into the hands of Jesus, everything needs to change from that point on. New level of thinking, new level of speaking, new level of walking. And it, I understand that takes time, but there, every, everything that takes time has got a starting time. Right? Your neighbor would say, did you hear him? Do you hear what the man of God saying this morning up in here, up in here? Now, Jesus, the Bible says he blessed. Not in this translation. But one of the gospel writers said he blessed and he break. If God's going to use you, he must first in his hands bless you. And then he, not Sin, not Satan, not his people, not his leaders. He must break you. But if he breaks you, he's not breaking the good things. Oh, let me say that better. He'll break everything. And when he, the thing about the breaking of God that's different from any other breaking, most breakings work out not so good for you. But when God breaks you, He breaks you because He has a plan to add through you. I wish somebody would get happy with me up in this room. Oh, it's more than that though. It's more than that. When God breaks you, He has a plan to multiply through you. Lord, I want you to bless me. 
but, but, but don't hurt. Don't, 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 don't do me like that. No, no, no. He wants to break you that he might release you. He wants to break you that he might multiply through you. I am preaching in this room. He wants to break you that he might maximize your influence. You are not just a good little old Christian. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You're somebody that belongs to the Most High God. You're in the kingdom of God. And you're called for impact. Neighbors say, I am P A C T. Now tell them what it spells. <laughs> that was unfair for bad spellers. <laughs> I was preaching one time in, in Alabama, and a revival broke out and was gone for weeks. And just to make sure everybody was kind of there with me, I said, If you belong to God, shout, I'm God's. God's. That place was just packed, and they was—they almost knocked me to the back wall with their breath. Not because it was bad, but the wind of it. <laughs> That's just an analogy, okay? That's not really what happened. And just to kind of make sure, Bob was shaking. I said, "I said, if you're the devil, shout out, I'm the devil's." And the minister's wife, one of the godliest women you've ever met in your life. I mean, godly. She said, "I." devils she was so caught up in what I was saying somebody must have asked her for a, pe a peppermint or something she wasn't checking no text or Facebook because there wasn't no smartphones and man I fell in the floor laughing <laughs> two or three of her friends that they're always speaking to each other stood up and gave her a standing ovation for honesty Name say, I know you ain't no devil, and I know you can spell better than that. You just always got to pay attention around here. <laughs> he blessed, he break, and then here's what he did. Then he said, now set all the people down, guys, to his disciples. Sit them down on these grassy slopes. Sit them in groups. And he said, begin to disperse this to the people. He blessed, he break, he gave. He blessed, he break, he gave. Will you let God bless you? Of course you will. We let him break you. When he breaks you, he's going to increase you. When he breaks you, he's going to deliver you. When he breaks you, he's going to empower you. When he breaks you, your moral codes, your honor code, your life codes are all going to new levels. Why? Because you're, you're called, you're chosen, you're broken, you're whole. And then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples start passing out. I need a Kleenex box. Would someone bring me... Kleenex box. Thank you, someone. Thank you, Laquita. The only white Laquita I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I love her. Fish and, fish and bread and fish and bread. I don't know how long this is going to last. Fish and bread and they're reaching. There's more. I had just a little bit in my hand. It's kind of wild when you got just a little bit in your hand and you have to start getting baskets to keep giving it out and you're having to increase the size of your basket when you started just a minute ago with a little bit in your hand because what's happening, it ain't possible, y'all. It ain't. But it is possible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. We must... Elevate our expectations and say, Lord, you know no realm of impossibility. All things are possible with you. And man, they, they did this, they did this, they did this. And finally, everybody's fed. Everybody's eating. And some of them are like me. They're not just going to, when the thing comes, when they go through the buffet, or the country folks said the buffet. When they go through the buffet, they're not going to just get a little old skinny piece of chicken. Not men. <laughs> and not girls with an appetite. Come on, somebody. <laughs> They're going to grab a little, uh, as they would say from Alabama, extra. Grab a little extra. And the Bible didn't say they had a nice snack. They were satisfied. They were full. Tooth-sucking full. 
belly rubbing, satisfied. And then Jesus said something so powerful. Everybody's fed. Don't you love the total life prosperity of God? You follow Jesus, he'll teach you things no one else can. You follow Jesus, he'll wipe the blindness out of your blind eyes, unstop your deaf ears, remove leprosy from your body, heal you from cancer. You, 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 follow, you follow Jesus, he's the high priest touch with the feelings of your infirmities. But when you follow Jesus, there's even more because now that he's passed out to the people through his leadership, could have done it all himself, but he wanted to make sure my team is involved because one day I'm going to leave this world and I want you to carry on. And I want you to do it as a team. Everyone say, do it together. They gathered up. Each disciple gathered up a basket full of fish and bread. A basket. Big old whomping, honking basket full of fish and bread. God, how do we read this? Do people want to read a book that's a lot? There's no book like this book. This was pretty doggone good. <laughs> but there ain't no book like this book right here. Oh, it might not always make sense, but it'll always make faith. All 12 disciples gathered up the pieces to make sure that nothing is wasted. That's what my life has been. It's been a gathering of pieces. A gathering of pieces. I've known that different seasons of my life, there's so much I don't know. There's so much I need to learn. Holy Spirit, I can't do it without you. I get bothered by people that's been saved for a while and they act like they've arrived. They don't no longer need the, need the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You are fooling yourself. Holy Spirit, I need you. Word of God, speak to me. Lord, open doors. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, don't allow the limits of Chris Owensby's quirks to be my excuse that stops me from going to the next level. Gather up the pieces because it matters. It all matters. Everything matters that we do to move toward God. A lot of things happen in your life God didn't want to happen. You should have never had a chance to happen. But either people connected with you let it happen. Either you got in a place where those things sh happened that shouldn't have happened. But he's able to even bring something out of that. You can go through something that's so dark and so hard and so difficult and use it forever to make an excuse of why your life is stuck and can never change. Or you can surrender it to God and you can be healed of it and you can carry a message to people that were broken just like you. Broken now just like you were then and tell them what your life was like and show them how that you're free. And you can open your heart and say, look, He even took the scars away in some situations, but He took my pain away. Can you worship Him in this room today? Gather up the pieces. This is huge. This matters because... You're not just going to come into a prayer line one day and receive a prophetic word and maybe fall under the power or even pray in a heavenly language and I believe in all those things. But it's not going to be that one thing that makes you great. It's in the living. It's in the walking with Him. I don't know why that bothers people so bad. Because it's like, you know, simple, well, I'm just inconsistent. That's because you got an attitude that sucks. But you can change that. Inconsistent can drop and get your in out of it. <laughs> I in. Come on. You figure it out tomorrow. <laughs> Can become consistent. Nobody that is consistent has always been that way. Ain't nobody doing it right today that's always done it right. Some of us have done it so badly, we just 
couldn't live at the level of foolishness to never do it any better than that. But God has shown us ways. And God has said, okay, will you let my wisdom teach you? Or will you beat your brains out in pain? I'm out of time. I'm not out of message, but I'm out of time. The cool thing about a series, you ain't got to preach everything in one day. Gather up the pieces that are left over that nothing be wasted. Every disciple gathered theirs. It's up to you to gather yours. Gather yours. Gather yours. I want mama to do it for me. She can't. Gather yours. Pastor, they hurt me so bad. How did you handle it? Well, I gave it to the Lord. Well, that's a great start right there. I'm still kind of struggling with it. Well, are you determined that you're not going to live with it? Well, yeah, I am. Well, you're on your way then. And you're learning how to not have to live in that same romper room, tail spinning, tail chasing lifestyle. How many people do you know that live like this? Chasing their tail. Going around in circles. Oh, oh, that's too, come on. Now looking at me with that religious stained glass. Look on your face, but there's just so many people, their lives are just doing this. Because Satan's got them caught up in the quagmire and the cauldron of a broken world way and a messed up world way. But Jesus will let you lead and tail chasing alone. Let you realize he's made you to be the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. But that only really begins to be applied when you believe it so much that you say, this is my lifestyle. And Lord, as you help me, I'm pursuing it with all that I am. Gather up the pieces. The good, the bad, and the ugly. If you've gone through a lot of ugly, be determined that you've gone through that ugly for the last time. You may face some more ugly in the future, but you ain't going to live with that ugly no more. And I'm not talking about people, I hope. I'm talking about situations. <laughs> As the Spirit of God is in this room, Lord, we find your value in all life's moments. I talk about forgiveness in a deep level within the book. I talk about I talk about things that if you don't get a handle on them, that they could, could potentially hold you back and stop you from ever experiencing your destiny. I've sat across the table from, with people throughout my entire ministry, both as pastor and, and, and evangelist and, and just friend, and heard them tell me about the dreams that they have, but they allow things to remain in their lives that keep them in that that spin cycle I mentioned a few moments ago and I, I talk about how that there's ways to get out of that gather up the pieces it's easy to gather up the things that are easy but because somebody passed to us and I'm passing you something that I hope causes you not to have to miss years the wrong way I want to pass something to you that has you so far ahead of anything I've ever had or been. That is my goal and my aim and my desire. That is my long for in you. I, I, I'm, honestly, I was desperately grasping for mentors and influences that were godly. I, I didn't want anything weird or crazy, but I wanted godly influence. And, and sometimes I got resisted and I didn't understand. And I understand maybe I wasn't supposed to be that close to it to anybody, but I was so desperate, excuse me, not just anybody, but, but only certain bodies, but, but I, I, was, I was reaching and, 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 and longing and desiring. But I don't want you to be the one that's, that's reaching, but you can't find it. I want you to be advanced because if my generation helped pave an interstate, I want yours to help pave new airports. I'm not that guy that says, well, I went through hell to get mine, and I want you to go through hell to get yours. You're going to have to go through enough hell by yourself. But I want you to learn from what I went through, and I want you to learn from my victory. 
Not just my struggles, but my victories. If you can learn. If you can't learn, then ain't neither one of these books going to help you. I'm just going to be honest. I'm either going to bless it or kill it right now, but I'm going to say what's on my heart. If you can't learn, it's not that you can't learn. It's that you are so full of you that you, nobody knows what you know. And you're right in some degree. But what you know ain't working good for you. And God knows some things that he wants in your life that you need today. Would you stand all over this room? Gosh, I got fish and bread and Kleenexes. <laughs> Laquita boxes. Take that back, Laquita. Somebody might need that. Would you lift your hand straight up to heaven, everybody? Lord, thank you for these wonderful people. Lord, thank you for what your plans are within our lives. Lord, we gather the pieces. We can't gather them all in this service. I heard the Holy Ghost just say something. I heard him say, I can do something by my spirit. I can help you gather some things that you now realize because you see them in a different light need to be brought into your now that you've experienced from me and things I helped you made it, make it through. You can bring them into your now. I'll redeem time and help you recapture things, says the Holy Spirit. Whew. Gather the pieces. And how you do it is not just by walking around with a basket in your arm. I'm living for you today, God. Living for you. Heart and soul. I'm not just living for you some. I challenge all of us, including me holding the microphone. Let's live for God greater than we've ever lived for Him before. Let's say, Holy Spirit, would you show me how to live for God greater than ever before. Holy Spirit, I I I've learned some things with you, but there's still so much more. I I've experienced some wonderful moments in your goodness, but there's still so much more. God, it's like as a parent. Do you ever quit learning as a parent? I haven't yet. I still some things I got my, I'm, you know, trying to figure out. How can I help? What can I do? How can I help? Biggest thing I can do is live for God. And that will bring the biggest help to all the situations of my life. Strongly for it. So, Father, I give you praise and honor and glory that you're touching lives all over this room. Let me, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. If you're in this room and you say, Chris Owens, me. I'm not right with God, but I need to be. I either never known the Lord or I'm broken fellowship with God and I've been running from Him for a long time. If that's you and you've never known Jesus or you need to come home to Him today and get a new beginning in Him, if that's you right now as the Spirit of God moves in this room, would you just slip up your hand? Representing your honest heart, God bless you. God bless you, son. God bless your heart. Who else in Jesus' name? This day matters. All those altar calls through the years, they all matter. The ones where hundreds came to the Lord and the ones where one came to the Lord, even the ones where no one came, at least they got a chance. It all matters. Every prayer prayed, every song sung, every hand lift, Everything we've ever done is under the Lord. It's, it's special and it matters. And God has noticed every one of them. Especially the things we've done out of a desire for relationship. Everybody in this room, for the benefit of those who raised their hands, in this moment, would you pray this with me? I know you mean business. How about you watching my Facebook Live, listening to this podcast? Say this prayer mean it with your lips. As you say it with your lips, mean it from your heart, what I meant to say. Say it out loud right now. Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life.
to forgive me of my sins, to wash me clean by your precious blood. I give you my heart. From this day forward, I'm going to live for you. It's going to be the most important relationship of my entire existence. And it will help me to appropriate rightly all other relationships and aspects of my life. I'm so grateful, Lord, that you are in the process of fixing everything about me. And right now, I receive the new birth. I receive a new life. I give you my heart. And from this day, I will follow you. And I won't turn back. I'm all in, Jesus. I love you so much. In Jesus' name. Would you give him a hand clap and a shout for every one of you that prayed that prayer. I believe you meant it. I believe you just became a child of God according to His Word. And I know you believe it too because you took the time to pray that prayer and mean it. And now this new miracle that has taken place in your life, the Spirit of God that's come inside of you is going to help you day by day forever walk this out and with joy. This is not a drudgery. This is not a hardship. Every day is better with Jesus. Every moment is better with the Holy Spirit. I just see people go through things. I think, oh, Lord, how are they doing it without Jesus? It's one of they're not losing it. No wonder they own drugs or alcohol. No wonder they're so messed up. But thank God that with Jesus we can go through everything. And what's wow, we can go through stuff with joy. And people look at us like, no, we're not, not enjoying the circumstances, but we're enjoying the presence of our living God on the inside of us. Let me speak this blessing over you. I'll be back at the, at the table with, with our books. Be sure and go by and get your free wristband. I want you to wear it on behalf of this series. And I pray that it just gets alive in you bigger and bigger. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for blessing me and keeping me. I thank you that your hand is upon me. I thank you that you are my keeper. And I ask, dear Lord, that you would bring me peace. That you would keep me in your perfect peace. Thank you for working in my life. Thank you for changing me day by day. And from this day forward, I'll never be the same. I'm growing. I'm growing. Amen. God bless you. We love you so much. Keep telling everybody about your great church. I'll see you back here at the back. God bless.